Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. Alright, I'm going to show you how I got from a buffer blow grade of an F, so failing, up to a B. And I'll also explain what buffer blow is and why it's important and why honestly it's more important than the speed that you get for your internet. So everyone is very concerned with how many megabits per second speed do I get if I move my gateway somewhere else, do I get a faster speed? And some people um, pick up on their ping and know, hey, you know, this ping is important um, to get down. But really, you have to go another level deeper. And that's where speedtest.net does not give you the information you need. Fast.com is a little bit better because it does give you a loaded ping. And that's getting closer to what we're talking about here on buffer bloat. But really, I'm going to show you a tool that is specific for buffer bloat. And it's going to help you pinpoint... Um, where your problems are and give you some guidance as far as what that means to you. So to get into a little more details about buffer bloat, it is not related to your ISP. So it is related to your hardware. So here is a T-Mobile gateway. Here's a Verizon gateway. And then I have my own personal ACES router here that's part of a mesh network. All of those are really what can drive buffer bloat into your system and what it does is if you are single computer and you're just sending a request out you know you're not going to have buffer bloat most likely because you're having um, just one um, request going out and coming back as soon as you start having multiple requests which you could have that from a single computer but um, multiple devices certainly will have multiple requests at a time now the router has to figure out how to route that and there's something called uh, QOS so quality of service but really to be more specific for buffer bloat it's SQM which is smart queue management and so um, very few home residential routers have smart queue management. I'll get into kind of which ones do and, and how you how you can get it. You know, I, I did improve it here with my ASUS. I'll, sh I'll show you how I did that. But, you know, think of it as you have an interstate uh, highway for your upload and download and you're streaming TV and you're doing video conferencing and you're gaming. And so all of those are semi trucks, right? So these are big or bigger packets that of data that you're you're um, you're sending and they're going down there and then on the on-ramp you know someone is on a motorcycle and they want to merge onto that freeway if those semi trucks are nose to tail and they don't let that motorcycle in that motorcycle has to wait until the semi trucks pass before he can get on to the interstate and if you know that's not very efficient obviously especially for the motorcyclist but if one of those semi trucks you know creates a small gap motorcycle can get in the semi trucks not really hurt that bad and the motorcycle is um, gets to the destination a lot faster so you know the analogy i'm saying is that motorcycle is like a, a web page request that someone is doing a web browsing it's a small uh, unit of, of data in a packet and um, if you don't have good queuing management then that data has to sit on the side while all these big packets go through so um, that's what buffer bloat is. Effectively is um, when you are loaded up, you're downloading stuff or uploading stuff, and then you try to send a request, um, then it slows down and it's much slower than your typical ping. So the speedtest.net ping answer is an unloaded ping, which means it's not sending or receiving uh, big packets of data when it checks that ping. It's just a a little relay back and forth <clears throat> so I've seen with T-Mobile I've recorded over two seconds of loaded ping or buffer bloat versus you know what you're talking about you know I typically have like 40 milliseconds 50 milliseconds of regular ping so this is multiple times slower and that's really because of the poor hardware or really the poor software firmware that's on some of these routers and what I've shown, what I'll, I'll show you some test results here. I have tested the Arcadia gateway from T-Mobile, and it is really crappy at this um, 
buffer bloat. I was gonna say SQM, but it doesn't have SQM as far as I know, so that's why it is very bad at it. Um, I've e easily gotten, like I said, a uh, thousand milliseconds, two thousand milliseconds sometimes uh, on those units for buffer bloat. This Verizon, um, this is an ASCII cube, is certainly better, but I am taking off some of the requirements for that by I turned off the Wi-Fi, which I've done on that one as well. And then I also turned off on this Verizon one, I can turn off the DHCP server. So I'm trying to offload the CPU as much as I can so it's not um, tied up because this SQM stuff, this routing takes up a lot of CPU power. So now on my Asus unit, I have the Merlin firmware and I can go in there and I can play with the settings for um, adaptive QoS. So I'll show you how I got in there and uh, made some changes. Let me hop on my computer and walk you through that. Okay, so here is one of my results from the Arcadian KVD unit on T-Mobile. And you can see here the buffer below gray was an F and my unloaded ping. So this will be the ping that like speedtest.net tells you was 57 milliseconds. So not my best, uh, not my worst though. Uh, but when I was actively downloading, my ping jumped up to a thousand milliseconds, and during upload, it jumped up to fifth, uh, sorry, to 533 milliseconds. And over here in the bottom left, it shows you, you know, under ideal conditions, which means for that 57 milliseconds, that I could do um, all of these web browsing, audio calls, video calls, 4K streaming without a problem. But it says, you know, low latency gaming. Uh, you know, first person shooter type stuff, um, you probably would not like it even if you had a 57 millisecond on, you know, loaded ping. And then obviously it shows here that due to my buffer bloat, uh, it's saying I basically can't do anything um, other than 4K streaming because streaming, um, you know, buffers itself and so you, it doesn't really matter so much about latency. Um, now that said, I have used this for video conferencing and obviously web browsing. And it does work, and um, it's this is a inconsistent score, but still, this is something that I have seen certainly several times with the T-Mobile gateways themselves. So let's go back in here and look at some other ones here. Okay, when I hook up through my Asus router with the Arcadian unit, I was able to get up to... Um, well, I, I slightly improved to a D and, you know, that one, you know, obviously was not um, great still. It was poor, but that one was improving. Now, I didn't try super hard on, on the Arcadia one to fully maximize that, but I was doing that on the Verizon one. So let me show you uh, what I got to on the Verizon one. Okay, so after I did all my setting changes, I got to a buffer bloat grade of a B, and that now gives me basically the ability to do everything I I could with my unloaded ping. So this look this unloaded ping is driven by the ISP, right? Um, your stuff can affect it as well, but that's uh, how long it takes you to get through all the network. So that one is driven by the internet service provider. Now this one is on Verizon. And you can see here, I these are my best numbers of uh, 50 and 40 milliseconds for uh, additional latency while I'm downloading packets. Uh, but you might notice that my speeds uh, here are lower. So let me go into what I did to improve this. All right, so first off, to test it. And I'm using waveforms tools specifically for buffer bloat. Now, obviously, Waveform makes antennas and signal boosters and other stuff. And so it's really cool that they give us some tools here to test this out. Uh, maybe check out some of my other videos using their antennas to help improve your signal from the ISPs. But again, that signal improvement isn't going to help buffer blow specifically. It can help your speeds. It can even help your ping some but it's not going to fix this problem. So they go through a little bit of um, what it is and there's lots of uh, FAQs down below, but basically I can go in here and start a test. And now this one I am on 
my Verizon unit and I am, I think I'm still optimized on my ASUS settings for the best buffer bloat score. But what you'll see here is the um, little blue dots are all these different uh, pings that they did and then it's doing some math to figure out what the best one is as far as um, statistically what your median what your um, you know different uh, percentiles are up and down and so here you'll see um, now that it's it's doing the loaded ping basically so the latency test for actively downloading so it's doing a download speed test and checking for the ping here so you know this one's slightly worse than i had shown the screenshot before and now it's going to do the upload side as well and this one the upload slightly better so you know you, you can expect some variation in there time to um you know time to time but this goes through and gives that and then it's going to pop out here and show me the grading scale so let's give it a second. Okay, so this one's a C, and that's because this um, download one went over their threshold from a B to a C. Um, but each different um, router is going to have different settings of how to get there. For this Asus one, it's under this adapt adaptive QoS setting, and I can go into here and um, enable the QoS. So this one has a couple different ones. It has adaptive, traditional, and a bandwidth limiter. And I was playing with this of, do I want to go automatic? Do I want to go manual settings? And this um, one is not perfect. I'll, I'll tell you what I really uh, wanted to get was actually one of the Ubiquiti um, ERX or ER4, which is a more um, commercial level router, and it's just a router. It's not a, a wireless device. So this would be something I would add to my existing setup and have it do all of the um, SQM. But this is what this is the best I have to deal right now. Those units are all um, on back order. They're out of stock, so I came in order one. But they're only like six, 60 bucks. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to them if you want to look at them. But this is getting more popular of a setting. And the challenge here is understanding what they actually use. There's a couple different ones for SQM. One of them is called Cake. Uh, one of them is, um, I forget the other name of, of, of this other one. But um, anyways, here for mine... The manual setting, the reason I picked that is I did lots of speed tests and then I was getting about 18 or something for upload speed. And so I set it a little bit lower, you know, like roughly, you know, I started out at about 90% of what my best speed was. And then that's where I set it for the upload or sorry for the download. I'm getting more like 200, 240, you know, some, something up there. And, and it varies. Sometimes it might be 180, 190. Um, and when I put it up at 160, 170, I really wasn't getting as much of a loaded ping improvement that I wanted. So I kept going down until I got to this 150 megabits per second that actually gave me the best um, loaded ping or buffer bloat score but when I do that it hurts my download bandwidth and this is really a kind of a bug or a flaw of not having a perfect SQM is this should be limiting me to 150 but what it's actually doing is limiting me to whatever this was um, well I guess it's 126 so it, it's actually better the you know the other time it was like 76 or um, 80 um, megabits per second so it was it was not doing a good job at keeping my download at my threshold it was actually over slowing me more than I needed to but what it's doing here is basically giving you extra space so back to my you know interstate analogy 
it's um, you know with the bandwidth limiter <clears throat> I'm saying hey these truckers can only use two of the three lanes uh, on the interstate so I always have one lane clear for other people to get on that's effectively what you're doing is uh, trying to give yourself some headroom so that um, other people or other requests out to the internet can get in so um, this is something you can play with if you have an ASUS unit this is certainly something you can do here if you have uh, other ones you can look it up online you know SQM and and see I think uh, Arrow has um, some of these SQM settings in their mesh networks uh, certainly Ubiquity and some of the other um, you know really pro prosumer or our pro level networking hardware they certainly have it and that's something that you can look at uh, playing with to improve your speed and what your uh, you know not your speed I guess your responsiveness it actually typically hurts your speed but you'll probably be happy to, happier with a lower speed and more responsiveness by getting rid of the buffer blow so I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope I made it uh, clear and easy for you guys to understand. So as always, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you like this content. And if you have any questions, put them down below. I will try to get to them and answer them. Thank you.